point one, we'll never know beyond all possible doubt what the world is fundamentally made of. Why? This is empirical science. Empirical science doesn't run on absolute proof. It's some kind of inference from the evidence we have to what we think of as the the most likely or plausible explanation. If someone says, well, we'll never be absolutely sure, yes, absolutely happy with that, right? Uh, nobody should dispute that. Point two, still, right, even in empirical science, we have hypotheses or theories, if you want to call them that, that can be established by evidence beyond any reasonable doubt, right? Not beyond all possible doubt, but beyond any reasonable doubt. Here are some what once controversial scientific hypotheses I claim have that status now. The Earth is a sphere. The moon is made of rock. Water is a molecule composed of two hydrogen atoms electrically bonded to a single oxygen atom. There are continental plates that drift. DNA has a double helix form. COVID is caused by a coronavirus. Now we're asking the question, ah, but what about the fundamental physical constituents, right, of nature, the kind of thing we look for in physics? Certainly what those are, or if you will, if there are any, although that's a harder question, has not been established in anything like, to anything like this degree of certainty or, 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 or probability. So that's an open question. So particles, that's a possibility. Fields, those are different. Why? Particles are always somewhere. Fields are always everywhere, right? So we can talk about that these are different things. Strings, all right? They're not like standard particles because they have this one, you know, one degree of vibrational freedom. Brains, which have more degrees. Things called flashes, which I could talk about, but are punctate in space and time. These are all proposals that have been made and arguments have been made in their favor and theories have been developed that postulate these things. This is from John Bell about particles. He was talking about the standard two-slit experiment we all know. He says, is it not clear from the smallness of the scintillation on the screen that we have to do with a particle? And is it not clear from the diffraction and interference patterns that the motion of the particle is directed by a wave?